Hey guys, welcome to the second episode in this short Lightroom series that I'm doing here on YouTube. Um, today we're going to cover um, a basic edit within uh, Lightroom itself. Um, as you can see, I've got a portrait today of a model called Gemma Duboc. You might recognize her from a past tutorial that I used one of her photographs for. Um, this is personally one of my favorite photographs that I've taken in quite a long time in terms of portraiture. Um, it is extremely sharp on the eye, um, which is what I always strive to achieve. Um, if my Lightroom decides to focus, there we go. Um, incredibly sharp and it's got it's sharp here and it's a little bit sharp on this eye and then it starts to fall off um, when it comes down to her dress or top I should say which is exactly what I wanted on the day it has had a little bit of uh, color boosting contrast and stuff like that nothing major um, there are a few tiny 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 little blemishes that we can sort out if we need to but the main part of this um, tutorial that I wanted to show you was this backdrop. Now, unfortunately, the um, the uh, blah, 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 the session was taken in a front room of a house. Um, it wasn't under real studio. Um, it wasn't in a real and studio environment. And because of my restrictions, um, I didn't have all of my equipment that I would have liked, um, which led to the backdrop not being completely white um, because the light that I did have I was trying to focus purely on the subject to get the best quality photograph um, I mean it, it's not 100% obvious I mean it would get by a few people but I'm not happy with it so we're gonna go ahead and make it look as if the photograph had um, an external light, a off flash light onto the backdrop and the way we're going to do this is using the adjustment brush in Photoshop, sorry in Lightroom um, and I've already coloured in the background um, just to save time if I click on this little circle here it will show you the mask that I've done um, but what I will show you is down here we'll just colour in this bit down here Okay, so now that I've got the uh, pretty much the basic uh, background sorted out, it's a bit rough here and there, but I'm not too worried about that because we're only going to be um, increasing the exposure to make it white. Um, so what I would do now is I would deselect my mask overlay as usual, and I would increase the exposure. And this will give me a pure white background like so. Now the thing is, I don't want it to be too harsh, I don't want it to be dramatic and make it look as if it has been edited, I want it to be believable. Um, so I'm going to bring the exposure down a little bit, just like so, and to me that looks a little bit more natural. And it's still pure white, but it's just not as strong. Um, and already that to me looks so much cleaner than before. Now what we're going to do next is we're just going to click done on the adjustment brush and what we're going to do now is we're going to come over and we're just going to take a little look at these tiny little blemishes um, on her chin here. Now these depending on how you shoot these can be covered up um, on the day with makeup um, and stuff like that whether you know someone or whether you're in a studio and you have a makeup artist there I I always like to tell my models don't wear too much makeup because don't wear too much cover-up because it will show up in the photograph with the lighting um, and unless it's done by a, a professional um, it's not always as flattering as it could be um, studio um, makeup artists really do know how to make a model look amazing but when it's just myself the photographer and the model I always tell them don't wear too much makeup wear a little bit of eyeliner eyeshadow stuff like that but things on your face like your cheeks can be sorted out post shoot um, which we're going to do here so just a tiny little blemish I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more here 
and we're going to come over to the to the little blemish here and we're going to select the spot removal tool which is here and we're going to come over here and we're going to shrink it down to about the right size I'd say about there and I'm going to click and there's two ways you can do this you can click and let go and Lightroom will select what it thinks is an appropriate um, set of pixels to replace it with or you can click on another one there's a little one here click and drag it yourself to where you think is the uh, the best set of pixels to replace it and now that we have done this and almost finished our photograph like so we can zoom back out and see what the results of that were not bad not bad at all um, you could if you wanted if the model has got slight bags under the eyes I mean these aren't really particularly bad at all I would pretty much leave these as they were um, if your model has got big bags or lots of makeup that sort of emphasized the bags or the type of lighting that you're using depending on where your off camera flash is um, you might want to spend a little bit of time just trying to you know decrease um, how strong they're coming across in the photograph um, but like I said at the beginning this photograph is very strong in the eyes and that's what I was looking for if Lightroom decides to there we go and this has been sharpened this has been sharpened through the basic um, editing tablet um, underneath the drop down menu detail it's got the uh, the sharpening um, the sharpening features now you can use this or again you can go into the adjustment brush selection under that feature do the same process color in the eye and then use the sharpness level in the adjustment brush palette instead of sharpening the entire image which might be a better call for you and your photograph there is no right or wrong way of doing it if you the photographer feel happy with it and you know your clients gonna be happy with it then that's all that matters don't let anyone tell you there's only one specific way to do something because it's not true not true at all um, and that's pretty much it right in the, in the next tutorial I'm going to be showing you how I would export this photograph uh, for print and for online use so um, make sure you rate comment and subscribe guys and um, go check out the uh, the next video for this one and um, I shall speak to you guys soon take care bye bye